What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the Prosper Show e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches, diversify and create additional revenue streams and stop just trading time for dollars. Go to rise25.com, learn more. It's run by myself, co-founder John Corcoran. It's application only. I'm very excited. Today, it's been a long time coming. We have Jay Lagarde who founded Ecom Engine back in 2006. They have a suite of software products used by Amazon sellers to increase revenue and get more reviews, which obviously all Amazon sellers want. They have feedback automation tool called Feedback 5, which we're gonna talk about, an inventory management tool called Restock Pro, and a product research tool called Ecom Spy. And they were the first feedback management tool on Amazon, and because of that, they have a lot of large sellers that use the tools. And a fun fact about Jay is, way back when he created the first comprehensive website in the world that automated the regulatory process. So. His technical roots go way back. Jay, thanks for joining me. Thanks very much, Jeremy. Glad to be here and look forward to chatting with you. What's best practices for that? If someone's starting, they go, okay, I want to start sending emails. How many and what frequency? Like you mentioned, the delivery is great. Do you send it one day after delivery? Do you send it a week after delivery? Do you send three more follow-up? What, what do you recommend as best practice uh, for the optimal result for the business and for the customer? Yeah. So there are certain general principles, right? Obviously, you you ask once, you ask very politely, you start your message by saying, you know, checking to make sure you're satisfied, you know, um, and really making it a very customer service centric email and offering to address a problem if there is any, you know, capture that negative feedback before it happens and and then ask for the feedback. Um, So those are best practices. you know, obviously you want to send it, you know, FBA versus non-FBA. Your timing may be different. Your style may be different um, depending on, on, on the circumstance. Um, so how often? Yeah. You know, it's generally safe to ask twice for feedback, generally. Some people don't want to do it. It's okay. You know, everybody's situation is different. You ask once. Obviously, you know, we monitor for feedback, positive and negative. So if anything does pop up, we don't solicit again. Um, we also have lots of auto exclusions because, you know, you may ask once, but the person may have contacted you by email. There may be some other other factor, which is a which is a, a trigger to not solicit. So we've got a lot of very, very deep um, exclude capabilities to not solicit when you don't want to. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of custom situations where people have custom products and custom brands where it it can be it can be reasonable to send more touch points even more than two i say that cautiously it's a unique situation sometimes you have one for feedback one for product review Um, there are reasons and it really it really is part of it is the kind of person you know everything you're selling has a certain niche can, can have a niche you know if it's a certain person is really into you know i'll just make something up i mean let's say you're selling a um, a, uh, uh, an electronic product that is kind of really niche and people are really into talking about it. Or let's say it's a, it's a knitting product and everybody who buys a, kn- a knitting product like this is really into this type of knitting or whatever. You know, people, sometimes if you know your people like to converse about the product and about how they're using it, you're okay. If it's more like, I just want to buy it and forget it type Amazon purchase, you know, Use your judgment. Uh, maybe fewer touch points are wiser there. Mm-hmm. So, is a general rule people should probably send two in general, one after delivery, maybe one later on? Our default when we first started is one. We allowed to. Um, I would say do one. 
if you're just if you're just a large seller selling all kinds of different things, yeah. do one um, and see how that goes, and then try to and measure and observe, and that's what we recommend. Mm-hmm. I would say that most people who do two, I'm going to be careful here. <laughs> most people who do do two do get a better response rate, but mm-hmm. there's some people that are that are more conservative and don't wish to do it. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate that. And is there a timing that's best? So there are two timing questions. There's time of day and there is um, mm-hmm. there is uh, a, uh, a time after delivery yeah. or time after order. Um, and there's also um, obviously um, – Issues about uh, about location, um, you know, state, country, whatever. So all of these things could be parameters. So I, this is an area where we may be coming out with some some stats at some point on open mm. rates at different times, mm. open rates on different days of the week. Um, uh, those are the two easy things to measure, yeah. you know, open rates and yeah. you can segment by open rates. And so, so, but then you also have got other variables. You've got, you've got, obviously the other big variable is what, what is your subject line? Um, so we, it is true. We do have a lot of data on that. Um, I, um, not sure exactly that I can give you any hard and fast rules. Yeah. Any good uh, but, subject lines people should be using? Now you like uh, you've become a copywriter expert because you've seen all these emails go. Yeah, out. we do have some recommendations on that. I I don't want to since I am not. I do know our guys have studied this, and I do know we do have some some very specific opinions about this. Um, but I'd be reluctant to say it here because I'm not sure how scientific it is. Well, I'm only talking to you, so it's your opinion. Um, yeah. It's anecdotal yeah. a little bit. Well, it is so, true yeah. that some subject lines are better. And, yeah. you know, putting a name, now we're experimenting with emojis and subject lines. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know exactly what the final word is on emojis, but they're always looking at these things and studying them. And um, names, emojis, asking a question, there are different things that you can do. But I can also tell you that what works in 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 2012 may not have the same effect in 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the subject lines that will uh, induce someone to open. What have you seen with trends, Jay, with time of day or day of the week that works best? I, I, I don't have it in front of me, the data, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass on that. However, I will go back to the team and have them – I will chat with you afterwards. I'll okay. be happy to do that. So. I mean – is, does anything stick out to you like more morning or afternoon? It doesn't have to be like 6.53 or something, but does anything stick out to you that was more morning or afternoon or early morning, any like general time of the day that tend to be better than others? Yeah. So what I'm going to tell you, you're going to think is a cop out and, <laughs> and it is a little bit. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it depends. Okay. And it really does depend. That's because, okay. Yeah. Tell me what. Because, because it is true that an individual seller can experiment with a different time and get a different result, or they can choose to opt out. Some people want to opt. Well, there are different reasons people want to opt out over the weekends. Don't, don't send over weekends, hold those up and send them on Monday. Um, you know, Different people selling in different niches experience, experience can experience different results, mm-hmm. and so, and so because of that, I, I don't know exactly. I don't have a bright line rule to give you. Mm-hmm. Um, I do know I've heard, anecdotally, um, different, you know, very different opinions about soliciting on weekends versus sol- soliciting on a regular day, um, but it's a very good question, and um, and I. On another people interview, people argue about that. People, some people say weekends are good. Some people don't. Well, not only do they argue about it, but even more than that, they actually have they actually have data that shows that the results are are different. Yeah. So what drives what's the causality that drives those differences? Uh, that's where it gets more interesting. And it's the same like health, like it's that both health products or both like both the same genre. I think it's if it's in the same genre, you're typically. I, I, my view is when you get significant differences in behavior, you're dealing with a different customer element. Right, right. Genre. That that would be my hypothesis. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I could see that. Um, yeah, so I want to go back to what's interesting is you started this with just two of you, right? So I want to talk about the team team part because you've built a team at this point. Um, and that's also interesting because when you do the larger contract work, does the team have to expand and contract depending on the contract work? Now it's probably more of a steady, uh, steady yeah, team. Yeah, we've, we've always been, we've, we've had organic growth. We haven't really had to contract for lack of business, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, so we did, you know, we started out very small, um, one developer, then we had a How'd you developers. find that developer? Because you yourself... I just somebody I met. And we started working together. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, then from there, you get a little more systematic about it. <laughs> but we had a, yeah, we then we had two developers, and and then we had, uh, um, we had a graphic designer uh, early on, and you know we've had a little bit of in and out, but for the most part, we've had some of the core people early on are, are still here. Um, some of the early people on that were with Feedback Five are still here. So that's great. And then talk about the timeline. So we talked about Feedback 5 was the first product. What came after that? Well, really, Smart Price really existed before Feedback 5. Hmm. But we had the term Smart Price. But we never really, we've still never really satisfied Smart Price. We have people who use hmm. it. They love it. It's a very customized pricing model hmm. that we've done for people. But we really don't market it um, at all. Um, so... So Feedback 5 was our first major tool, um, and and then Restock Pro would be our other major tool. Mm -hmm. And of course, Ecom Spy is an important tool. Um, it's it's not we don't sell that on a subscription model. We sell that on a, you know, you come and use as much of it as you want. You can use it for free to start out. If you like it, you can just buy credits and use it. So Ecom Spy, some, you're saying? Ecom Spy. We have some people that buy you know a billion credits, and I'm exaggerating slightly, and spend a whole year or two using them, and other people that buy them every few months when they need them. So what do people use the Ecom Spy for that's been valuable? So I don't really know all the ways people use it <laughs> because people use it in ways that I've heard people use it in ways that we never anticipated they would use it. Yeah, um, like what? You know, market monitoring and checking out what's going on. But really it's real initial idea behind it is is that people are looking at opportunities. Um, in the market. They're looking at bulk opportunities. They're looking for those needles, hopefully not just a needle, but needles in a haystack to, to, to get into the game. And so, so our view was is that, you know, a lot of Amazon sellers are going to be data savvy. And really what they're after, whether they're doing an opportunity buy of a, of a certain number of goods or whether they're working with a new wholesaler or whatever, we're assuming that they can get a spreadsheet and from, from whatever it is that they're buying from. And that spreadsheet's going to have um, UPC codes or EANs and or maybe even ASIN sometimes <laughs> but um, and that they want to have whether it's 100 items or whether it's 10,000 items that they're trying to evaluate they want to understand is it number one worth working with a supplier um, and number two if it is worth working with the supplier as an Amazon seller you know what do I want to concentrate on what area of his products do I want to concentrate on and so the idea is you can load this data up. We can give you a temperature of the market um, at that time, exactly what your profitability would look like selling these products. Um, and it's just a it's just a very fast evaluation tool to understand whether you want to take it, take up take up an opportunity with supplier or you know what 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 products you want to focus on. It doesn't. It's not magic. You still need to exercise judgment, but it allows you to to get a lot of data very very rapidly to make an informed judgment on a on a large catalog yeah. um, so it's a very simple idea um but also very powerful for those that need this type of tool gee so another question um about pricing so it seems like the ecom spy pricing model is different from feedback five which is your traditional SaaS. how do you decide on the pricing model and then the actual price so <laughs> Um, so really we just, for Ecom Spy, we just thought, well, this is something that, that we're going to start it out. We're going to, going to price it on a per trial per unit basis. It's going to be simple. People won't feel like they're locked in. They can buy as much as they want. That's just what we started because we were trying it and we've never changed it. So we could add, we could very well add a 
subscription model onto that that gives you a, a more of a certain number of hits. Um, not sure that that decision still still something we could do down the line. Um, in terms of pricing, you know, we try to we try to develop a rough sense. You know, early on there was. Yeah. You know, we didn't know a lot about pricing. We just tried to see, you know, what is fair? What do we think we can do to, right. in order to make ends meet and still keep keep the keep growing the product? So we made educated judgments um, uh, based on all the things we knew about the market, about the product, about the costs. Um, you know, nowadays in SaaS world, there's just lots of fancy models and people out there that are software pricing experts and all of that. I, I, I can't say that we're experts in that. Um, th no, I just asked that because like you, we were talking before, one person goes, oh my God, you're only selling this for $20? Yeah. And I would pay 150 and then the other person's it, like, this is way too expensive. So you, you have to sure. go, you have to price it somewhere. Sure. So what's sure. Your, and, and, your method? And, yeah, and, and, and what, what every business does, whether you're, you know, it's a pharmaceutical company or whether it's uh, uh, whether it's a software company, whether you're buying Salesforce or whatever, there's always market differentiation, you know, and how do you differentiate? Some people can only afford this much. Some people can afford a lot more. Um, so, you, you, you know, you, you allocate, um, you know, you allocate capabilities and you scale your mm. price on the product, whether it's right. based on you know, volume or sales amounts or capacity utilization, you come up with something that's fair and also features. You can, you can add more features at higher levels. So you come up with something that's fair yeah. and that allows the people that, that are going to get more value out of it and that can get more value out of it. Um, you give them more value and, and you charge more and those that don't need as much value and can't afford it, you charge less and mm -hmm. it's never perfect. And that's, that's the way it happens with a lot of software these days. You'll, you'll see a pricing menu, and you'll see it scales one way or the other. And, you know, we're no different. And, yeah. um, you know, a lot of people have come in, you know, I don't say a lot, but several people, as you well know, have come into the market after us offering feedback management tools. Um, and we've always, you know, looked at, you know, always looked at their pricing models. Now it's a little different, but... Many people just replicated our pricing model very mm. closely. <laughs> they just looked at it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe they did their own study and decided that was the right one, or maybe they just looked at looked at ours and said, "We're just going to cop." They've been <laughs> doing know. it for a while. It's working. We might as well just do it. So we haven't changed it a lot, but it, it, we are very excited. We actually, um, our team has been working on a actually a new pricing model um, that's going to be pretty exciting for uh, for which one for feedback live. Okay. So it's going to be coming out, oh, really in a few weeks. Um, I don't think anybody's going to be forced into it, but I think a lot of people will want to do it. And so one of the things that it's really going to be focused on and optimizing on is we, we're seeing more and more sellers that have multiple marketplaces, whether it's in Europe or, or maybe whatever. On Amazon. So on like, Amazon. Not Amazon. just like we're not talking Amazon to Walmart to eBay. It's more Amazon Canada, Mul Amazon. Mexico. Multiple Amazon marketplaces gotcha. and, and multiple stores or whatever. And so one of the things we're doing is we're going to make it very, very easy and, and, and cost effective to be able to manage to number one, to manage multiple stores. Um, so you'll be able to manage multiple stores on Amazon with a single, you know, essentially a single a feedback five account. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty excited about that. And uh, um, that's going to be, you know, coming out here pretty soon. Yeah. I always ask Jay, you know, since the Inspired Insider, what's been a low moment in the business and what's been a proud, one of the proudest moments? Hmm. That's a good question. So... You know, I mentioned I mentioned a few times early on where we were doing custom projects, um, in that we we had people that that couldn't pay, didn't pay. Um, you know, I mentioned that case of where somebody you know filed bankruptcy, and these were really nice people, and we were really bummed because they really had negotiated with us very hard to deliver value for them and hold off on the payment. Mm. And that was that was a, a a pain point for us, and it was also a pain point because there were times where, you know, we're doing work and we're 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 doing some custom work, but also investing in platforms, where you know things were. The money's you know, not coming in; and it's going out. Type of thing. Let's put yeah. it that way. Yeah. You need to pay salaries and you need to watch cash flow. I wouldn't call it a, a terribly low moment, but but there were times where there's uncertainty. Yeah. And you realize that, you know, this is either going to work or it's not. And if it doesn't work, 
Um, you're going to pivot. You're going to do something else, or you're going to have to contract. <laughs> you know, right. you don't want to contract. No entrepreneur does, but they realize all, all entrepreneurs realize that if you're going to take a risk, uh, you, it may or may not work. Even even the most yeah. cautious, uh, careful plans, you've got to take risks, and and you hope it's going to work, and you build all your, your risk, um, you know, uh, management into it, but. Not everything works perfectly. Do you yeah. pivot? Do you do something else or, or what? So there's certainly, and, and of course we still have that today. We, we've got lots of fun, fun and we think very valuable projects that we're working on that we can deliver value into the market. But are we certain that people will, is it certain that that value is going to be delivered? Are we certain people are going to pay for it? Are we certain that somebody else is not planning on doing the same thing exactly when we are? No, we're not certain. So, yeah. So on the flip side, the one of the proudest moments. Hmm. Well, in some ways, getting that offer for the contract was a proud moment. Even though we didn't take it, it was a proud moment. It was a nice validation. Amazon had recommended us. We did work. We got huge kudos from this large company that said, you guys made a major difference in us getting this billion dollar contract i mean i know it wasn't all us but but they said some very nice things about us and we really appreciated hearing that so that was a proud moment even though we had to say no and the fact that we said no was also a proud moment because Mm -hmm. it was a tough call and we were proud that we made it and and didn't get sucked into something that we weren't Mm -hmm. really destined to do so so there have been other proud moments um obviously we've meet met certain milestones we're kind of celebrating our 10th anniversary congratulations yeah We've, you know, published a milestone where, uh, you know, something like 45 million positive feedbacks that we've, we've helped get. Wow. Um, we're very, very proud of some of those milestones. Um, but you know, those are some of the big ones. Yeah. I love it. Um, Jay, I want to point people towards your, your site and I have, um, a last question for you. I really appreciate your time on this. We, sh- people can go to a few places, I believe ecomengine.com. It's E C O m engine.com they can go to feedback5.com where else can we point people towards they can discover and explore your your tools yeah thanks so ecomengine.com feedback5.com spelled out five of course it should work either way um restock pro r-e-s-t-o-c-k pro p-r-o.com restockpro.com um, and ecom spy e-c-o-m-s-p-y.com those are our main websites um, maybe more to come, um, but uh, you know, all of those can be found on ecomengine.com. So yeah. definitely appreciate us checking us out, and we're a very open book company. So uh, we 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 really enjoy feedback, uh, whether it's it's glowing feedback. Of course, we love, uh, but we <laughs> love almost right. we, we love almost as much um, you know feedback that that's constructive as well. Yeah. And, uh, so. So last question, I actually have two questions. One is, um, you know, obviously we talked about the Feedback 5 Ecom, uh, you know, the Ecom Spy, Restock Pro, and Smart Price. Um, I'm curious what other softwares you recommend other people, obviously, that you don't feel the, the need for. What else out there do you recommend to, to sellers to complement what you do? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, um, we don't personally get into the business of, of recommending a lot of software. We do have certain software partners that are on our website hmm. and some coaches and things that are on our website. But, you know, there's some really great shipping software out there that helps people do shipping. You know, I mentioned ShipStation earlier. That That's a good product. Um, there are a lot of um, very solid ERP products out there. Um, these are, you know, some friends of ours. I don't necessarily need to mention any of them, but... There are some really good ERP products that that are multi-market channel. Um, um, you know, uh, I, I hate to mention some and then exclude others because there are a number of them. There are a number You're of very them that diplomatic. are diplomatic. I, 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 maybe, <laughs> maybe to a fault. Uh, there, there are some really good ones out there, and there's some good people um, yeah. that that are really passionate about about the marketplace and that produce really good products. They are. There's some strengths. Some of them have strengths. Um, some are better than others. Um, so I'd say you know ERP tools, um, shipping tools are very important. Um, and of course, there's some good research tools. We're not the only research game in town. There's some research tools that that will you know extrapolate um, based on sales rank and things and show you what the 
what sales sales is and you know keyword tools and things like that that are out there that are, are an important component of a of a good Amazon ecosystem. Is there a place you so, go to see to learn or subscribe to to kind of get whatever's out on the market, cutting edge tools or information in the e-commerce world? Where do you where do you read? So our our job is really all day every day. I mean, not just my job, but our product team's job. They're supposed to really understand the market. They're supposed to understand what people are getting value out of. So yeah, we we obviously we internet retailer, e-commerce bites, you name it. We, we, we keep up with a lot of blogs too. We have a lot of good partners um, that are coaches or that are, you know, gurus and experts in the Amazon marketplace. We obviously read them and, and with some reluctance, I will say that we, we do sometimes learn things from some of our competitors as well. We, we read their, we'll read their blogs and we'll learn something. Um, we, we try to learn wherever we can and, and try to stay really up to speed on the market um, and understand what's going on. Cause really, Really, Amazon is a it's a great market. It's an exciting market. It's it's a global market and it is fast moving. Yeah. So what is true today uh, will you got to keep your finger on the pulse. Probably be true next year to a large extent. But there are other things that are going on. And so you can't just learn it once and be done. Yeah. Um, Conferences that you like. Obviously, you're going to Prosper Show. What other Prosper, conferences? Prosper, we go to SCOE, we go to Ecom Chicago, we've gone to uh, uh, Jim Cockrum's conference. Um, you know, those are, and we've probably been to a few other. We, of course, we've uh, we, we've been to um, Ed's conference in in New York, um, small seller conference. Um, so those are some of the ones we've gone to. You know, we. We, we, we discuss among ourselves. I'd love to hear your advice. Uh, should we be going to more conferences? Because uh, we are, we, like I said earlier, we never did Do you go to IRCE at, also? Uh, we'll be going there this year. Whether we display or not, I don't know, but we'll definitely be yeah. there. How do you ship. determine whether you're going to display or just attend? Um, uh, we just talk about it. I can't yeah. say that we have any scientific yeah. reason. I don't know and if there's like more Amazon sellers, you know, because IRC probably is. IRC traditionally has been more, much more broad based. Very right. few Amazon sellers. Exactly. Last few years, a little different. You've had pre shows that are Amazon centric. Things may be changing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Amazon is so big now that you can't, you, can't, it. you can't not know about them. Right. So, last question, Jay um, Culture. What do you do to maintain culture? I'm talking to one of your staff, and she was very big on you getting the word out about Ecom Engine and just you talking because she said, we have a great guy at the helm of this company. So you're doing something to foster a really good culture and uh, people who love the company itself. And so I'm curious what you do uh, for the team to maintain that. That's a good question. Um, well, I don't, I'm not sure who you're talking about, but that, that's nice that, that, that this staff member said that. <laughs> and uh, so really, really, you know, you talk to any entrepreneur that's gotten a business to a certain point and, uh, you know, what's the, what's the famous quote? Um, uh, Culture eats strategy for lunch. Um, and and there is a, there's an element of truth to that. Certainly you need to have a good market. Um, certainly you need to have a good strategy, um, but you can have all those things. Um, and if you don't have folks that are excited and really rowing the boat all in, all in the right direction and, and really caring about customers and caring and loving what they do, um, you're not going to get as much done. And so, Mm -hmm. and, and also, you know, it, it, it's good to be passionate about your job and it's good to enjoy your job. And, uh, why, why would you want to, why would you want to do it if you weren't? Weren't, I mean, obviously you yeah. need to eat, but why would you, you need to have that passion right. too. So we really, it's important to us that we, we really work well together. And yeah. so we try to build a team where everybody's views are honored, uh, where we have good communication, where we really, you know, we're trying to empower sellers. Um, that's our mission really to empower sellers with great software, but in, in, it sounds cliche ish, but we really also want to empower our staff, um, each and every one of them, uh, to be the best they can do at what they do and to really um, think about their individual job, but not just about their job. Think about the customer because that's our value stream, what we're delivering to our customers. So everybody is empowered to think about the big picture of what we're doing for our customer 
and and to step up to the plate. If, if what do you do to foster that? Like, do you do? I'm just curious. Some like tactical things. Like, do you do? Okay, we do a meeting every Tuesday and Thursday, or something that gets the communication, or or yeah. I don't know. You do a company outing, or I don't know. What are some of the tactical cool. things? Yeah, we we definitely do? do that. We definitely have company outings and dinners and and things like that. But you know, we have a meeting cadence at our company. Um, we have you know, weekly meeting cadences for different groups of the company. We have a monthly um, all-company meeting cadence where we announce certain things and have updates and take Q&A and honor people for, for great accomplishments that they've done in the company. Um, those are some of the things we do. We, we you know, we, we, we share in, in the success of the company, I think, fairly fairly openly and, and generously, and I think people appreciate that. Um, and... Um, you know, those are some of the things we do. And but really a lot of it is is really attitude and, and whether or not it goes back to that empowerment question. And when we tell people, you know, we really want you to not just view your job in a tunnel, but really think about the big picture and you're at the table um, on decisions that are being made. I think that I think that empowers people. And I think it it ultimately uh yeah. Leads to more more engaged um, more engaged uh, employees that that again are more passionate about doing right by the customer. Yeah, you're bringing the process to them, so they're invested in the process, and that's what you did. Sound like you did all along, even from that big contract, you know, in the beginning. That's exactly right. Yeah, so, yeah. Jay, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Everyone should check out ecomengine.com. All their products, all their information's on there, and uh, thank you again. Yeah, great talking with yeah. you, Jeremy. Thank you very much. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.